Hi everyone. In today's video, I will take up three different examples to show you how you can convert a research concept into a measurable variable. These examples are very simple and easy to understand so that you can use this understanding and implement it in your own research. Now, before I go into this video, my last video explained the difference between a concept and a variable. The link to that video is in the description section below. Remember, concepts are mental images or perceptions and therefore their meanings vary differently from individual to individual. Whereas variables are measurable, though of course with varying degrees of accuracy depending upon the measurement scale used. So let's take some examples so that you can understand what we mean by a concept and a variable and how you can convert from one to the other. So mainly we convert concepts into variables so that we can measure them in our research studies and then we can uh, study relationship between the variables and provide the findings to the examiners or reviewers or our readers. So in this example, the concept is itself is academic achievement. Now when I say students academic achievement, now for you the meaning of academic achievement or achievement may differ from what I want it to be. So to make it very clear and so that we both understand the same meaning of the concept so that for both of us, the meaning of the word academic achievement is same. We have to convert it into a measurable variable. So in this example, the concept is high academic achievement for nursing students. This is what I want to investigate. And what are the indicators of high academic achievement? What do I mean by high academic achievement? So if an examiner asks me, what do you mean by the word academic achievement? I will say the indicators are uh, a student's performance in written examinations, their performance in practical assessments, uh, in work placements. So if I put them in the hospital and I score their performance, what is the score there? Uh, what is the performance in field work? So that if they go somewhere outside their work or outside the school uh, in, a, in, a different, in, a, in a neutral location, for example, it could be a health camp, how is their work there or their performance in tutorial presentations. So I'm trying to use these indicators to define what is academic achievement. So what will be the variable I can use which I can measure the academic achievement with? And the variable in this case, I would be using it as is marks or scores in the assessment. So if I, if I let's say, for example, their performance in written examination is marked or scored out of 100. If a student achieves 60, then I will say the definition of that is if the student has achieved 60 percent, then they would get a credit grade from me or they would get a high distinction if they get equal to or more than 80 percent or a distinction if they get equal to or 70 percent. So for me, a student's high academic achievement can be measured using the academic scores and I can also give those scores working definition with respect to the percentage or the or the number that they have achieved in a particular assessment. That is how I convert the concept into a variable. Let's take the second example. In this example, the concept I'm trying to investigate is the effectiveness of implementing a health program uh, in the Aboriginal community of Australia. These are the natives of Australia, the original traditional landowners of Australia. So I have implemented a health program and I want to see uh, how effective it is. Now, effectiveness for you may mean different and effectiveness for me may mean different. So for us to have a common understanding of what we mean by effectiveness or if an examiner or reviewer asks us what is effectiveness, how do you define it? I have to define it with certain indicators. So the indicators could be change in the uh, rate at which people are dying, a change in the morbidity pattern, change in the illness occurrences during especially seasonal changes or changes in the weight and height of the community or you can target a particular age in the community. For example, you can uh, target uh, young adults or uh, infants or uh, senior citizens or you could also use change in the percentage of visits to medical services as an indicator. So if there is a reduction in the number of people visiting the doctors or pharmacy, then uh, you can, you know, you can develop a correlation there between the implementation of the health program and uh, the effectiveness, which could be a good effectiveness. So like it is highly effective or significantly effective. 
So what will be a variable? So variable is something that you should be able to measure. So if I'm saying that I want to use the change in the death rate as an indicator of the effectiveness of implementing a health program, then I would like to see a change in the age specific death rate. So for example, let's say um, in 2022, I noticed that uh, people of more than 50 years old, uh, the death rate of them dying out of natural illnesses was 67% uh, uh, out of the 100% who have died. And then I find that that death rate has gone down. For example, in 2023, that 2023, the death rate has become 40%. So there is a fall in the specific death rate of people more than 50 years old, or it could be in infants, or it could be in young adults, depending on what specific group, or maybe you are targeting the whole community, it comes down to you as a researcher, of course. All right. Uh, similarly, I would like to see changes in the morbidity pattern, the type of the morbidity pattern. And if I start comparing percentages derived from previous years or previous medical reports, and I see a change, uh, uh, in 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 the percentages after the health program has been implemented, that shows a significant change. It could be either uh, supporting your hypothesis or it could be uh, not supporting your hypothesis. But at the end of the day, you are getting a result out of the research that you are doing. Uh, and you get the example. So for example, if I see the increase or decrease in the number of illnesses in a month, uh, changes in the weight and height, again, in a specific age group, uh, increase or death in percentage of reported patients. So all that will give me an indication, especially if I measure it in, in with, re, with respect to the previous years, or maybe you could measure it with respect to one year previously, before or after, then uh, you can get an indication, a measurable indication of how effective the health program was uh, after it was implemented. So you get the idea, right? Then let's take the last example or third example. Here I'm trying to measure how rich or how wealthy a particular community is and the indicator of that would be the income of a person or income of a group of people so let's say that i live in a in a particular suburb the suburbs name could be uh, the wealthy suburb and in the wealthy suburb there are 100 people living so i want to get an indication of how wealthy or how rich they are so the the indicator would be their income and that would in give, include all the active income or passive income. So when I say active income, I mean income that they're earning directly through either a job or a business and passive income would be the income that they're earning through their various investments. Uh, I might also look at the value of all assets. So their assets could be uh, rental properties, uh, boats, stocks, cash, cryptocurrency, retirement fund, uh, whatever. So what will be a variable that I can measure? So of course, the variable would be the total income. That would be a number that I can get earned per year. So if I can get an indication of how much money they are earning, that is giving me a number. That is something that I can, I can measure. It is not left to interpretation. Uh, if I can get the total value of property, stocks, bonds, cash, crypto, retirement fund, etc. Again, that gives me a number that I can measure. And then I can give it a definition. So I can say that uh, in a wealthy suburb, out of the 200 people living, 90% uh, people are rich uh, because their total earned income is more than $1 million per year, uh, or their total value of investments is more than $1 million a year, or they hold assets uh, more than $20 million worth, something like that. So that is up to you what definition you want to give or what, what kind of a definition you want to uh, allot uh, to your variables. Uh, I'm just taking random examples here and examples that maybe not be making sense to you, but you get the idea. So you may take a concept, uh, but that concept has to be converted into a variable that you can measure and then use indicators for them. And indicators should be linked to variables uh, by a certain um, measurement uh, that you can be able to measure. 
so and that gives you the variable and then of course you can allot definitions to those variables that you allot so of course these are more of quantitative research that i'm talking about i'm not here talking about qualitative research studies qualitative research studies are a slightly different because qualitative research study involves usually involves studying perceptions beliefs or feelings and you do not make any attempt to establish uniformity in them across the respondents and hence measurements and variables do not carry much significance on the other hand in quantitative studies as the emphasis is on exploring the commonalities in the study population measurements and variables play a very important role so i hope you get the difference uh, i will talk more about uh, variables in qualitative studies in my future videos uh, keep watching please subscribe spread the word we trying to learn from one another please share these videos uh, with your friends and fellow students who are involved in research and i will see you soon bye for now